Hello there and welcome, my name is Julia Masalska and this is MADE. You can follow me on my Instagram at Julia Masalska. Okay, so um, today is going to be all about food photography and how to retouch food photography specifically. In the past I have worked with, for example, Panda Express and I helped them retouch their food pictures. So today I would like to walk you through the process that I went through every single time they've sent me a picture. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open our photo that we would like to edit. And here we already have our image that we would like to retouch. So for that, um, I'm going to go through several steps. Step number one will be adjusting light and contrast. Step number two will be retouching the little uh, blemishes. Step number three will be adjusting the colors and color matching. So to edit the brightness and the contrast, I'm just going to click Command and J to create a copy of the layer. And here I would, I would like to um, use the raw filter to adjust my color and, um, and brightness and so on. So I'm, I'm selecting this layer and I'm going on to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And here, I will get this window where I can adjust all the colors. And so now I'm just going to do slight, um, slight color editing here, uh, I mean, light editing. So I'm going to adjust the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to increase or decrease the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to tone, actually, yeah, I'm just going to go about plus 13 on the highlights and I'm going to de increase, uh, decrease the shadows and the whites I'm going to tone down just a little bit so I don't have two bright colors um, to work with. The blacks I'm going to lighten up just a little bit. The texture I'm going to add a little bit to that and the clarity I'm just going to keep at zero and maybe I'll adjust a little bit the vibrance, I'll add a little bit of vibrance. As you can see, I'm always staying um, at like plus minus 10 to 15 and usually it's not more than that. So it's very slight changes that I'm, that I'm doing in the beginning. Of course, if you have a very dark photo, I would maybe go beyond, but this is what I usually do. I never go into the extremes. So let's um, click here, okay. And as we can see, there is already a difference to the photo from before. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a copy of the raw filter um, layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click Command and J. And now I'm going to rename this into blemishes. And what I do on this layer is I am going to go into depth and see where I have those little things that maybe are a little bit disturbing for the eye and I'm going to remove them. And that I will do with the stamp tool. So here on the left side you will find the stamp tool right here. And um, so here I will adjust the different sizing of my stamp tool. Right now it's very tiny as you can see so I'm going to decrease the size here a little bit. And here you can also adjust the hardness of it. So right now I'm just going to remove all the blemishes, that's step number one. And I'm going to go in, in here and with the stem tool I'm just going to remove all the different things that are a little bit, you know, little imperfections because um, I want to have a photo that, um, you know, that is not disturbing for the eye and that just looks very comforting and, and pretty neat and perfect. So let's say I want to edit this part here. What I want to do is I just want to follow the color the way it goes and just copy it from there. So because if I copy color from here, you will be able to see it. And as you can see, the before and after, the avocado looks way more appetizing here. And that's what I'm gonna do with all the objects. I'm And as you can see with the avocado, it looks way more appetizing when it looks, you know, a little bit more smooth and neat um, and you don't see the cuts or the brown marks on the avocado.
now that I'm done with the blemishes, I'm going to go to the next step and do some color correction here. As you can see, in terms of blemishes, I even removed the leaf at the bottom. So um, sometimes, you know, you want to have a smooth flow into the in the image. So here we have this flow from one plant to the other and the leaf was kind of disturbing and also plus the leaf did not look very appetizing so I just removed it completely. As you can see this blemishes level or um, this blemishes um, layer already makes a big difference here in our end result. Alright, let's jump onto the next stage and it's going to be color correction. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to create a hue and saturation level because I want to adjust some of the blues that are being used here and then we're going to go into detail and adjust all the different objects in their color. Alright, here we have our hue and saturation and here the cool thing is that we can select specific colors and edit those. So I want to get rid of all the blues here. As you can see, the background has a little bit of a blue hue. And now that we are removing um, the color here, the lightness, um, we will see that um, the greens are starting to come up a little bit more. So, But I'm not going to remove all of it. I'm just going to reduce the saturation um, to about like uh, maybe 70%. Um, and then let's see if we can play with the, with the darkness or the light. Um, I think the light here is actually good so let's just keep it like that let's go into our greens let's see what we can do here so as you can see that um, if you go into the extremes you will see which areas of the photo are being um, adjusted with this um, with this color so here I want to decrease the saturation of the greens just a little bit not too much and now let's take a look at, at the before and the after. So I'm, for that I'm going to group those layers of my, ed my editing layers and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go onto group from layers. Okay, so if I click command G or if I just create a group of those layers, I can group it group number one or I can also double um, double click it and edit it into our edits. So now let's take, a, let's take a look at the difference that we already have with just two steps of our editing process. All right, I had to move myself a little bit to the side. So here we have our edits and as you can see, if we turn them on and off, we can see there is a big difference. And so now what I want to do is I want to create a new layer for the color correction. So now I'm going to go onto this little button at the bottom here. Um, hopefully you can see this and I'm going to click it and then I'm going to select solid color and that I'm going to put on top here. So what I want to do here is I just want to draw over the different objects. So now um, to make the greens greener, I am going to select the greenest green that I possibly can. Um, let's make it like super, super bright. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to reverse my um, coloring. So right now everything, the whole layer is colored in this green color. But what I want to do is I want to add this color to specific objects. So I want to paint over some objects with this color. And for that, I want to click on this little um, little side um, rectangle and I want to click Command and I. So I inverted the layer. So now uh, my layer is not painted at all. It's, uh, it's see-through. And if I paint now with the brush tool, you will see that I'm painting with green. So here, what I want to do with this layer is I want to select this little rectangle here and I want to go onto soft light. So whenever I paint now, um, my green turns greener, but everything else does not get that much affected. So what I want to do here is I want to definitely stay on this black rectangle before I paint. And now I want to select a brush that's uh, way smaller than this. Probably this around, uh, da, da, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. And those are going to be very slight changes that I'm going to make. And I want to set the opacity to maybe like 
30 or something. So now you cannot really see what I'm doing. I am actually increasing the green in here, but you can't really see it until I'm done and I will show you the before and after. You will be amazed by what this little layer can actually do to, to our image. So um, you might actually also decrease the opacity just a little bit so you can see some results. As you can see, it's very, very subtle right now, but it's going to give a big improvement. And later on, we can even adjust this green color and see um, if this is the right green for us or if we want to go a little bit darker or lighter. And the same thing I'm going to do with the avocado here where it's supposed to be a little bit more green. So it looks nice and fresh. And the same thing I'm going to do with our paste. And the cool thing is here, since we are using the same color of the green, um, these, uh, these objects are going to look like they belong together. So let's just go over everything that's supposed to be green. Like this. And also our little plant here. It doesn't have to be that precise, you will already see results even without being that precise. So now let's take a look at the difference. And bam, you see this green, although it's very subtle, it makes a big difference and it makes things look way more fresher. And let's take a look um, at our image without the edits. So as you can see, this kind of correction um, really make, makes a big, big difference. All right, so let's go into, into the details and adjust everything here with our green color. So now what we can also do is we can adjust this color. If we say, okay, this green does not look very natural. So what you can do is you can just double click on this green color and you can go ahead and change it up. Just find the right, um, the right tone that you think works with this image. As you can see, I'm going along this stem so that when I'm kind of going over the spots, I'm still keeping the same color that um, kind of is repeating itself along the stem. So this is the before and after. Let's say I want to color match this photo. I would, I would take a look at the specific greens that I'm using here and I would open a different photo and I would take a look if those kind of look um, have the same color green and a cool tip here is since I have my green here already I can just copy this and paste this into my new photo um, uh, editing retouching process so that when I paint over something else I paint in the exact same color and that also kind of gives this feeling that the photos are cohesive and the colors look like they belong together so that's what I'm going to do with the next picture now so let's say I want to um, select the same color green and paint over, um, you know, enhance this green a little bit just the same way. So what I want to do is I want to copy this number, command C, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to on, onto this photo. And of course I'm doing all the blemishes and all those um, detail adjustments first and light. But now let's say I'm adding the same uh, solid color here. And here I can literally command V, paste my code, and then I, command I inverse my layer so that means when I paint over here I'm painting with the same color green of course we have to put it into soft light again so now we have we are basically enhancing the same kind of green color like in our past image so those things are very important when you try to make things cohesive and when I was working for Panda Express, for example, I was also having my own color codes that I reused over and over to kind of enhance the colors in a similar way in all the images so that when Panda Express would send me a photo, I would already know, okay, their greens have to be this tone. And for each tone, I had a different color code. So each dish basically had a different color code. And that kind of helped me to um, keep the images cohesive and to really 
uh, you know, keep it consistent through my work processes, although I was working on the images at different times. So that is something that I found really helpful and hopefully you guys found this video helpful as well. And thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure and I'm hoping to see you soon. Bye bye.